As the sun rises over the stunning London skyline, happy April Fool's Day and happy Draft Day. Welcome everyone to our brand new eSports studio. I'm Andy Tudor and joining me on the sports desk is Joe Barron. All right, Joe. Good, so, thank you. so can you still smell the sawdust from the uh, newly con uh, crafted desk that we've put together here? No, but I can smell your sweat from the... Uh, oh, the that's not... Construction. That's, there was a lot of, you know, uh, blood, sweat and tears that went into this, absolutely. So... Anyway, well, thanks for thanks for that. That's got to set everything up for a good start here. We've got a packed show for you today, starting with uh, that great trailer that we just showed you. Does that get you in the mood for the uh, the rest of the year? Definitely looking forward to it. I think we've got some uh, interesting times on our hands with some of the guys coming back and some of the guys who are new this year. I think it'll be a good show for everyone. Absolutely. So let's get straight on to ESL news. So with Weekly Cup 24, uh, we tested our larger 12-player yep. grids, didn't we, on PC? And then we rolled that out to consoles in Cup 25. So can you tell us like a little bit more? Like Fans have been waiting for this for a while, haven't they? It's definitely been amongst the most requested, if not the most requested change or a tweak or whatever you want to call it to the ESL Cups. Hmm. Um, I think we had the biggest turnout we've ever had across the three platforms. It certainly felt that from my perspective as yeah. well, like, you know, 12 player grids, it's actual racing as opposed to these kind of like driver duels that's... Uh... Yeah, I think they, they had their, you know, the driver duels had a, a bit of their own personality to them and it did create some, some good little intense one-on-one -on -one rivalries, but what people really want is to have that rivalry with more people, to have more of the inter-team battles as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, yeah. The 12 player grids have definitely let people do that. Um, people seem to have been behaving themselves as well on the track, which is good. I, I don't know what your experience was like. No, absolutely. If anything, I was the disruptive force in it all okay. because um, I'm not really surprised it was. <laughs> so you go into a qualifying session, you know, it's 10 minutes long, and you see some guys putting down some amazingly fast times yeah. and things. And I'm thinking, oh God, how am I ever going to compete with those guys? But once you're all out on the track there, it is very much a free for all. So I knew, so it was Osher's Laban at the weekend, and I knew that there's like a 90 degree left hand turn straight after the first straight. Yeah. So I knew that as with every you know first corner, it's like it really important to get in at the first corner straight away. And I knew that I had to kind of like wedge my way in. Um, I'd chosen the Aston Martin GT4, um, which has got slightly better acceleration, like I think the Ginetta that was in there as well. Um, so I pulled away, I got a quite a good start and I went into the first corner and, and I was like, oh, I've, I've got the inside line, but I I wanted to be greedy and I wanted to get there before everyone else. So I broke quite late and therefore so I, accident people, I accidentally cut the track a little bit. So I didn't hit anybody, but um, yeah, I cut the track slightly, got a immediate speed penalty straight away. Um, and then that was it really, like the rest of the race was kind of done. Like I was following... Um, some other guy, there was a, a player from uh, BAM Esports uh, in front of me and then a guy from RZ uh, Motorsport in front of him and we just kind of like trailed each other for the entire race but it was just nice being in a race again, you know, as opposed to, yeah, a one-on-one -on -one where if the guy just like disappears where you've got no chance, it felt like... It's a different kind of pressure and a different kind of craft for people to deal with, I think it'll go exactly. with our internal esports championships being hot lapping and having done the one on ones with the ESL in the past, it'd be interesting to see how people uh, climatized to the 12 player grids and yep. it's a different skill set to what we've asked people to use before so it's a new challenge yep. for absolutely I felt like I still had a chance because I knew there were two guys battling yeah. further up and I thought oh if they kind of take each other out I might be able to slip in or might be able to you know increase my uh uh, decrease my distance to more them and stuff. But also more opportunities. Exactly. Well. Yeah. So 12 player grids, they're here to stay. They were absolutely awesome. So I think let's have a look straight away at the top performing drivers on ESL right now. So we've got our driver rankings up here. Yep. So, I mean, it's a lot of French people, <laughs> a lot of uh, French drivers. They seem to be very good at driving the French. It's a lot of your opinions definitely is what I expect for ESL events, but uh, yeah, driver R1, the PlayStation 4 player from France, as Andy says, is probably well, quite comfortably looking at the stats, the overall best player across all the platforms that we've had so far. Yep, He's absolutely. probably been, I think consistency has helped him a lot. What we've tended to see is even the guys who are in the very best teams, they tend to have good weeks and bad weeks. Right. Whereas he, for the driver one for the most part, has had a, a pretty solid performance all the time. He's always, almost right. always on the podium every single week. And we saw this nice with time. Shumi, our MVP in the Driver Network Championship yeah. last year. You know, he, uh, I don't know whether he, you know, got a one or two place at all. Like maybe he did, but I'm, I'm forgetting now. But he was consistent throughout the entire thing. Yeah. And therefore that's what led him to 
get a pretty good position, yeah. even though he you know just kept turning up, kept doing well, and that I was it. Say driver one has won a lot of races. <laughs> oh right, yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. Isn't With it? that, those um, amount of points, definitely. Uh, at the same time, when he doesn't win, he invariably he still finds his way onto the podium somehow. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, so he's had a really good run, and then Karki as well, who is on uh, PC player, is our second best overall ESL player, and he again is someone who's been extremely consistent. Mm. Um, he has benefited from being in teams. He was with SDL for a long time. We'll talk about this more later on as well. But he was yep. with SDL for a long time and made a, a switch to their rivals at BAM. And he has done, yeah, again, he's another player who wins regularly. And when he's, when he's not winning, he's usually on the podium as well. Right. And he's in joint second place with Empower, who's from, obviously, SDL. Another switch of driver as well. He was a Starlux player previously. Right. Um, so yeah, he's done. He's on Xbox as well. So it's good. We've got one one from each platform in the top three. Yeah, and pretty close on pace generally. Although Driver R one is in terms of points is yeah, he's steaming gap. ahead. Like the other guys are really going to have to, you know, something's something's either going to happen to him or the other guys are going to really have to lift their game, aren't they, to yeah, kind of so. get through there. And then yeah, as we go down the list, there we've got Ocker Rocker is the kind of like the name that jumps out at me there because he's done uh, pretty good in terms of uh, consistency too he's probably actually the the most consistent of anybody he hasn't won many races mm. but uh, driver r1 i even has had a little a bit of a bad period and, and so had khaki and empower but Ocker Ocker, every time he's signed up i think he's top three or top four right. at, at the absolute uh, minimum and yeah, you just you you just you see his name come up in the sign up, you just think, okay, I'll be writing about him in the results at some point this week. Right. Yeah. Um, so so yeah. and he he was originally a privateer as well, and he's now with VP drivers for the SL Cups and for the new gotcha uh, for the new seasons as well. So if anything, he's only going to improve with the backing of a team and more help with setups and things like that. There's a Saitu pack I see there as well, and then you actually have to go further down to actually see Alex uh, USSR. Alexa, um, like he's a name that keeps coming up, certainly in my mind, but actually he's quite far down in the in the rankings he there. He really dominated. The, when we first started DSL stuff in October of 2015, he really dominated, probably up until just before Christmas, he was winning nearly every single week. Mm. But the, as more people became aware of the Cups and started joining, I think he's been challenged a little bit more, um, for sure. I think he hasn't necessarily stuck at the top. He struck out in front to begin with, and I think people right. light him up. So he's got a little bit of work to do, I think, to, to pull, him, pull himself back up. And he's, he's signed up for our uh, Good. NBA series and our Logitech series as well. So I think he's, he's obviously keen. He's obviously quick. Yeah. But I think he's, there's a lot more going on around him now that maybe wasn't there at the beginning. Maybe exactly. Brand, really new, dominant, so. brand new season, maybe a brand new attitude, and I like, yeah. can bring that kind of stuff on. So people at home are probably wondering why there's 18 drivers. It's because I took the top six. And I took the top six so that we could have the guy in uh, last place there, uh, promo from uh, CQR. I just wanted to have a UK guy in there as well to represent uh, over on our <laughs> side. We can't have it all dominated by the the Germans and the French and the uh, we'll more and the Polish as well, obviously. We'll see when we start to talk about the other, uh, the other competitions as well, but I think we're seeing a, a, a nice influx of UK players for the first time, which yep. being, we're not biased, obviously. But being, of course not. <laughs> very impartial, but uh, being British, we can't help but want to see a few more of those guys do well. Absolutely. So that's a great point. So let's move on to the meat of today's broadcast, which is the upcoming coming 2016 season. So this year we introduced a number of changes based on feedback from the drivers and teams as well as some other improvements to make things a bit more exciting and a bit kind of fairer to all as well. Uh, the biggest of which is the expansion of the regular season into two series, the Logitech G Championship Series and the NVIDIA Challenger Series with divisions within each for PC and combined console. Now drivers have been signing up to both the LGCS and NCS for the last few months with expired registration ending tonight at midnight. So let's have a look, I'd say, at the teams which have been signing up so far, starting with the LGCS. Now what have we got to look forward to here? Like the first name, like I see on the top of the list here, is that USSR Alexa yeah. from uh, Five Aces. I see. He's, uh, I, I guess he's the you would call him the, the number one driver in, in that team. He's, he's the name that stuck out for me certainly. Right. And I think again, similar to what we were talking about with him before. I think it's just going to be interesting to see him compete in that environment and see how he stacks up against the guys, the, the familiar names that we're used to seeing from last year, gotcha. the SDLs and the. The team sharks of this world. It'd be, it'd be good to see how he stacks up with those guys. Yep. Now the next one is Angels of Death Racing, which I've I've not personally heard of before. Yeah. So, so tell us a bit more about uh, them. They're a PC gaming clan that goes back 
to the very early days of things like Battlefield and all, all right. the first person shooters of a few years ago and they have been in more or less every game you can think of they've had a competitive team going that's good and, uh, in the last couple of years they seem to have been focusing more and more on sim racing mm. um, so yeah it's good to have those guys on board just because of that strong history they've got and all the experience that brings with it as well right cool BAM, obviously, you know, BAM Esports, they played the first half of the Driver Network Championship. Yep. Uh, and they're passing enough points to come third overall at the end of the year, despite not exactly. being the year, yep. how quick they can be. Exactly, you know, and the more I see, as we saw in the ESL driver rankings just now, you know, they are up there. You know, they are, if there's ever going to be a competitor this year to SDL, I would say it's BAM. Um, so, yeah, you can't they're looking really good. You can't say anything other than SDL come in as favourites, having won the... Uh, SMSR Driver Network Championship last year but I think BAM are probably the most realistic at the moment anyway they look yep. like they're going to be the most realistic chance of a, a big competition for STL and there's a little bit of uh, rivalry and controversy between the teams right. as well BAM has posed surely not no <laughs> not going to have a happen to <laughs> stuff ever, but uh, BAM has definitely poached at least two of STL's drivers right. in the winter season they've taken uh Tuscan and Kaki, who have both done really well in the ESL Cups as well, and were both uh, SDL drivers before and now with BAM. So not but, only are they likely to compete strongly with them, but there's going to be a rivalry there for sure. It sounds evil to say, but this is kind of what we were hoping for with like the off-season. <laughs> you know, not that we want to cause disruption within the teams and things like that, obviously, but you know, having this off-season and having to register for these yeah. events now... This whole preseason has all been about poaching the best talent because you can't change your team until the transfer window there's, opens up later on. So as well, there are so many good drivers, and now the teams can only register five drivers per yep. team. Per You've got to pick your best so ones, don't you? You have to pick the best guys, and that's going to either it makes it more competitive for people to get the best five guys they can get, but also yep. if guys don't end up in the five for one team, it makes they can fit somewhere else. And Absolutely. We've definitely seen a lot of competition for drivers over the winter. That's great. And it's great to see the next guys, CQR Club, um, British team, really nice guys. I've played with them. I think they're on my friends list on Xbox One and stuff. Yeah, yeah really nice to see them uh, joining in too. So moving on to the console division. So obviously we've got SDL here um, with their lead driver Sonic there. Um, and then, yeah, his uh, fellow drivers Mahalo and Rossi uh, just behind there as well. So yeah, they'll, they'll, as I say, they're going undoubtedly as favourites having won the Drivers' Championship with Sonic last year and the Team Championship as well in the Driver Network Championship. Yep. Um, they're a, yeah, they've done pretty well, I would say, in the ESL stuff in between seasons in the winter. They haven't dominated. It looked, yeah. For a while, it looked like they might. And right. then when BAM started to get uh, a bit of steam behind them, it seemed to sort of even itself out. It seems to be that whoever, if an SDL driver wins in an ESL event, a BAM driver comes second and, and vice versa. So gotcha. that's what's leading me to think these guys, these guys are going to have a bit of a fight on their hands in, okay. in this series this year. And they also, like looking further down the list, we've got PSF Racing, again, rivals of SDL in, yeah. in a number of different leagues. Uh, Team NGR, who have got the best logo of all of them, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> it looks it, like there's another team as well, but we were talking about Angels of, Angels of Death earlier. The NGR guys have been around since Project Gotham Racing 3, the what, through Xbox 360 launch title that yeah. a lot of people have fond memories of. So they've Great. been racing for ages, and I'm sure they'll, you know, they'll bring experience to it as well, and they'll know what it is to concentrate on themselves and knuckle down and get the job done so it should be cool to see cool uh, BAM again um, on console they've got uh, a team on PC and a team on yeah. uh, um, on console as well different uh, drivers yeah, obviously the, the console team for BAM is made up more of drivers that we saw when they were competing last right. year whereas their PC team has more new faces in it gotcha um, but yeah even, even so you know, even I said they're going to be up there so yeah, dare we say one is the A team and one is the the rookies here? <laughs> I'll, but I'll uh, exactly, exactly. Now RZ Motorsport. I'm gonna say Z because they're French, and I, that's probably uh, not instead of saying the American. Like, but I, these are like my picks. I would say um, they were they turned up to the ESL events. They're doing decently in the ESL events, you know. Um, so although their names may not be as prolific as some of the other guys, like oh, these are kind of my dark horse I would say yeah, to watch there's, there's two or three teams I think in the ESL events in particular just behind uh, Batman SDL who mm. are sort of threatening to upset that balance 
they, yeah. they, they're very quick they just need to that final step to get amongst those top two exactly I mean I would say SDL um, and BAM are kind of lock-ins yeah. you know those guys are you know they're undoubtedly going to be the best I would hope uh, and then behind them as you say we've got a few like Unity Starlux Viking who had consistency issues I would say um, I had roster changes and stuff throughout the year as well um, but they're all looking like contenders, all of those and you were saying have been about on podiums at some point. They're just not there. They're not quite there right. every week. And you were saying about unity, like in our in the uh, beyond the oval, uh, our outside the oval event uh, in in game. Yeah, the US race car pack. Community they were doing event. very well there. Uh, the PlayStation Four leaderboard. I think they had most, right. if not all, of the top fifteen drivers. I don't think it was all. I think it was most. But so yeah. Still, you got to say that that's showing good signs for them. So yeah, so that's awesome. So yeah, behind then, you, so, so we've got RZ Motorsport, uh, VP drivers who are saying with Oka Rocker as well, uh, and five aces. Um, so yeah, it's pretty good. It's a packed field. <laughs> it certainly is, you know. Um, so people looking forward to some good racing action, like, you know, there's bound to be some great uh, rivalry going on here. And uh, yeah, it's looking extremely yeah. interesting. So uh, now let's have a look at the schedule. So the LGCS starts on April 15th. So let's have a look at what we've got. So starting off the summer split is the opening prototype round at Silverstone, which ties in with the first round of the World Endurance Championship. And we're running the TS-040 uh, hybrid there, um, which might be a bit of a new experience since it wasn't originally available in the original game, right? It was only available via the on-demand program. Um, and then after that, we move on to Imola, uh, the Azure circuit, um, the Bugatti circuit at Le Mans, uh, and then finishing out the summer with the iconic uh, Spa. Now, we tried to capture a bit more of a feel of European motorsports here, didn't we? So concentrating on the high-end LMP and Formula cars. I think with it being uh, this being the open setup championship of the two championships we've got this year, I think it made sense to let people loose on on learning how to set up the most extreme cars, so we have focused mm. primarily on prototypes and on single seaters like Formula A. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I think that just setting up the car could be a challenge, and not let alone the driving part. But these guys have yeah. got that experience. So absolutely, absolutely. Now, between the two splits, the transfer window will then allow, uh, will open to allow teams to change their roster after having locked it in during the draft. And that's sure to cause some drama, right? As we potentially see players that are being poached if they're particularly talented. Maybe some drivers being culled if they haven't performed yeah. up to expectations and stuff. Uh, that's going to be interesting, definitely. In my head, it seems more likely that we'll see drivers get dropped rather than uh, too many switches. We might see right. some people get replaced with new people or people who didn't make quite, quite make the cut for their team at the start of the season. Yeah. So we, we have a rule change this year uh, where drivers no longer carry their team points with points them when across, they move right. teams. So there isn't quite as much incentive for mid-season headhunting as there was before. Um, so yeah, I think we'll see more people sort of being demoted or promoted within their own team rather yes. than into team switches. Absolutely. You know, you've, you've put your faith in a guy that you've hired for your team. You know, you've registered um, uh, um, on uh, for draft day today. And then you're stuck with that guy, you know, and if he's not put, well, you know, what I'm saying is like, if he's, <laughs> if he's not performing, you know, you've yeah. got to make a harsh decision. Do we keep, do I stick with him? I had faith in him back in April. Do I stick with him or is, is now the time to make a change? Or is there actually somebody from another team who actually wants to move or something, which is potential. Um, so yeah, it's going to be extremely interesting um, as we go into uh, July 11th when the transfer window opens. Now, after the transfer window closes once again, we then head into the autumn split for the back half of the season. Now, this time changing things up with the Ford Fusion stock car at Watkins Glen before moving back to some formula action at Monza, the closing round of the IndyCar season at Sonoma, and some more prototype racing at Sakito, with the final then happening at uh, Barcelona in the Formula Renault 3.5. So, whew, that's a lot. There's uh, <laughs> 10 rounds there as opposed to the 18 that we had there last year. But more variety, right? We're, you know, we're keeping the action super uh, fast, right? So yeah, really good. Okay, so moving over to the NCS now. Now this is a fixed series we've added as we saw that many of the drivers last year had amazing skill behind the wheel, but they didn't necessarily have it underneath the hood. 
So by taking the kind of dark art of tuning out of the equation, crossing the finishing line now in first is purely down to driver skill. So reaction has been pretty good to this series, I think right? A lot of people were asking for it during last season as well. It wasn't something we could change mid-season last time out. Mm. Um, but not only is it, like you said, it, it makes it for a different kind of playing field. It also means a wider variety of people can join in. So we're going to see people who are either new to esports or new to this kind of racing in general, as well as established guys who are just going to be quick. Yep. We'll probably see more new faces here just because people will spring surprises because they don't have to load to set up the car. If somebody's quick and they join this, we haven't heard of them before, they exactly. might win the whole thing, who knows? Absolutely. And it's a time thing as well. You know, it's, it's, it's only, each round is only open over the weekend, which means you've got to, um, you know, lay down some laps. You've got to have someone on your team potentially who's really good at making setups. You've then got to test those out. It's a lot of commitment right there. Yeah. So with this new series that there is there, it's a lot of, um, it, it condenses that time down to just me and the track, trying my best, you know, telling you how I did. And then obviously you trying to beat me and us as a team also trying to win as well. It's so. a very tight competition. I think. Absolutely. So many of last year's teams have got a, an entry into the NCS as well. Like looking down the list here, we've got SDL once again. Um, five aces are in there again. Starlet's five, in there again. exactly. Bam, Bam got drivers in here as well. Yep. Um, so it's looking like many of the teams who already had large rosters have maybe yeah. divided their team in two or are maybe competing in both since they're yeah. on, on uh, consecutive weekends, aren't they now? Yeah, so. We don't have any events between the two series that clash ever, so if teams can want to compete in both, then yeah, they obviously can. The one I see here that wasn't in the Logitech G series is the STDRS, um, who did okay last year and stuff like that. You know, yeah, we profiled okay. them on the website and things like that. Um, yeah, yeah, so I think- came, They came eighth overall last year. Right, so yeah, I'm hoping that those guys kind of do uh, better this uh, this one, year uh, too. The first name that jumps out at me for this is TSA Racing, who we've had a few run-ins with at live yes. events. They're a, a British team who have quite a strong half factor about ground winning championships and stuff there. And they, right. They've, uh, they've been asking us, when are you gonna do Fix Up? We wanna race Fix Up in Project Cars. And then as soon as we did it, they, they came and signed up. And these are guys who, you know, they won more than one event, I think, at Eurogamer Expo yep. last year, including one where they filled the entire podium. Yep. Um, they also won remember that. Autosport International, where they beat Ben Collins, the Stig, and they, be yep. they nearly beat Nicholas Hamilton's time as well. They were yeah, close. so they've, they've so they got the competitive they're spirit, don't they? They're, they're in to win. So. These guys know what they're doing. I think they could, uh, they could be one of the... You're talking about individuals potentially spring surprises in this series. I think of the new teams, I think they could... Mm. Get right amongst the guys who we think of as the establishment from last year. Cool. So are they your pick for? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking to watching these. That's guys. right. Come on then. Okay. So let us know at home your top picks by tweeting us using the hashtag, hashtag #LGCS or hashtag #NCS, and check out our recent article as well over at ProjectCarsEsports.com where we run down the ones to watch. Okay. So have, let's have a look at the NCS schedule now. So. The aim here was to provide more of a GT experience, right, compared yeah. to the Formula and the Mon uh, cars. So it's GT and then Touring as well. Yeah, so we've got the Bentley in there, I see. We've got the Chevrolet, that, yeah. Aston Martin as well. And then after we return in the uh, uh, autumn, we then throw in the Caterham. So what were we thinking there, adding in the uh, the Caterham compared to all these different GT uh, cars? Well, most of these events are you know, matched with a real world event. And I think we've, what we've done here is we we wanted a variety of tracks, so we went looking for an event at Brands Hatch because we didn't have Brands Hatch in this series yet. Right. And we found that uh, Caterham runs a, a kind of one mate race series itself that goes around the UK and, and some other countries as well. We thought, hey, we've got this car in the game. We yep. haven't really used it in the esports scene before. Let's give another new thing for people to see. Absolutely. And it kind of throws the cat amongst the pigeons a little bit because yeah. not a lot of people will be used to that car. They're more interested in the more modern cars and things like that. Yep. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be quite interesting. And we've got a little bit of DTM in there with the Mercedes AMG at yep. Nürburgring. Uh, we've got the Stanceworks BMW that we uh, showed at the Time Attack uh, um, Championship at Autosport as well, before ending up in the Ford Falcon at Bathurst. So a totally different flavour to this series, yeah, basically. Some, wild, some Australian wildcard entries just for that final round, I think. There'll be a few guys we, jumping in for that. Yeah, so we've had um, a number of uh, guys from New Zealand I saw um, entering yeah. into the uh, uh, their draft picks as well. So yeah, It's definitely not a European event anymore this year. We've got a right. lot of American That's great. teams. Yeah, yeah. Um, some, a couple of South American Australian teams. Australian as well, Canadian. okay. Uh, I think we had a... 
I even had one team from Thailand, I think, I saw. Amazing. Point, so, yeah, it's That's great. International battle as well. Cool. So now the other piece of big news this week was the announcement that there is going to be a €20,000 prize pool for this season. So in addition to winning trophies and swag, you know, the winning team within each division will each receive a cash reward of €5,000. And that's sure to be a motivating factor, right? Um, you know, maybe you could upgrade your sim rig or something potentially, or maybe you could grab the game in uh, VR, grab yourself an Oculus Rift as well. You really want to be sick VR and a D box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for that, you know, that full, I'll cover that. full motion yeah. um, uh, mo movement as well. Absolutely. You know, uh, we have just launched Project Cars uh, on Oculus Rift. Uh, I was over in San Francisco at the launch event and it went down a storm, you know, because the racing genre has always had. Uh, it's always been more accepting of gaming peripherals. Yeah. We've always had um, seats. We've wheels. always had wheels, things like that. Uh, yep. Absolutely, you know. So now we've finally got a helmet, you know. So I think when you sit in a chair and you've got an actual wheel in front of you, which is like the most natural user input to, for a driving game anyway and then you put on your Oculus Rift headset and you're looking around, you know, when you're in an open wheel car, like a Formula car or something like that, and you see another driver pass you, you know, you can glance over to the right. It's just absolutely phenomenal. Um, we've also f found internally as well that it makes you a better driver because you have this greater sense of spatial awareness so you can see the upcoming um, corner better. You just get the sense of depth that is to that uh, corner, and therefore you know kind of a better way to brake. You know, you can you get a you can, you, you just do, and you know, when you're coming up to the corner, and you're looking at your apex. You can actually look at your apex. Yeah. So unlike other systems like Connect or Drive or Track IR or something like that, um, this you're actually looking over there, and then you're driving over there at the same time. It's just absolutely phenomenal. So yeah, you know, it's, this is not a sales spiel <laughs> at all. I'm, but believe me, Ocul <laughs> Project Cars in VR is absolutely fantastic. But we're not going to tell you how to spend your prize money. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that just about wraps it up for this episode. So here are the important dates for your diary. So April 15th, we kick off the season with the LGCS Round 1 at Silverstone. And then the weekend after, on the 22nd, we head to Monza for Round 1 of the NCS. And two weeks later, you can then pick up Project Cars Game of the Year Edition, which has all the feature improvements, uh, liveries, cars, tracks that were added over the last year, you know, and that is just great value, you know. Plus, you get to be one of the first people to drive the new Pagani Hawaii yeah. BC that we put into the game, as well as the combined Nürburgring and Knowledge Life layout. Uh, for those endurance and enthusiasts over there. Pagani is exclusive to Project Cars as well. So. Absolutely. So, on behalf of myself and Joe on the desk, therefore, thanks for tuning in and be sure to get your sign-ups in by midnight tonight and good luck in the season ahead.